Yo, what up guys, it's Jesse with The Float Life. And I know you're all thinking, where's Jeff? He's usually the one doing the tire changes, but for this Pint or Pint X tire change, you got your boy Jesse. All right, let's get into the tools that we're gonna need to do this job. So first thing we're gonna need is some tire levers. Also a valve stem puller, a Torx T20 bit. That one's for the small screws on your pint. And then the T30 Torx bit is gonna be right here for your axle. Fits right on in there. All right, so once you get all your tools, the first step is gonna be taking off this fender delete. You're gonna take that T20 bit, put it in there, unscrew. Now these fender deletes are held on with little like clips over here too. So when you pop it off, you'll feel them just like that. Then the next thing you're gonna wanna do is take off this front foot pad. Don't forget these screws go into your front foot pad. Okay. So when you get here, you're gonna wanna just take off that foot pad. You unscrew it counterclockwise. Then we got access to the motor cable as well, right here. So then we're gonna just take that motor cable Get that unscrewed, just like so. So once you get that motor cable unscrewed, you're gonna wanna flip her over. And this next step is what you want that small Phillips head for. It's literally for these two screws that are right there. It's basically these little like axle clamps. It's like these little plastic things that clamp over your axle. You're gonna wanna take your little screwdriver and just remove them. I got blessed with this fancy little, you know, like glasses screwdriver. Once you get those unscrewed, make sure you don't lose the screws. That's like a big thing because replacement screws for these are impossible to find. So do not lose your screws. So now you wanna take your T30 bit and remove these axle bolts. Once you remove these axle bolts, it should loosen up these little clamps. So you should be able to just pull them out after you get them loose. And if they don't just pull right out, use something to just pry it. It's probably dirt or grime just sticking it in there. All right, this one came out. This one seems to still be a little stuck, so I'm gonna just take it and we'll, you know, pop it out. Once you have those removed, your wheel is pretty much free. Make sure that this cable is undone, like so, and just like that should pop off. And as you see, I was able to keep the bumper on. You don't have to take the bumper off. You can do everything with just removing the front foot pad and the fender delete. So I'm gonna set this on the side for now. Clean up my workspace a little bit, you know? All right, so you've got the tire off of the board. What's next? You're gonna need that valve stem puller. This tool is for this part of the tire right here. You're just gonna stick it in, find that valve stem, and just unscrew it. See, simple as that. So now, because I don't wanna mess up this cable, I'm gonna be moving to my designated tire bench, which is right here. Now you see this cable, I just stick it down through pop it on like that. Now, a lot of people use bead breakers. 
Today I'm just going to show you the caveman way. Alright, so as you can see, if you got the guns, you don't need a bead breaker. Alright, so next thing, after you get those beads broken, you're going to take these tire levers. You want to take these tire levers, and you're going to take this side of the tire lever, and think of it like a clock. If the valve stem is pointing directly at you at the top, that's your like 12 o'clock. So you're gonna to wanna to put one of these at like around nine and like two, nine and two. Boom. Pop it over like that. Give a little pressure from the back and your tire should come right off. It's all about the angles. I know it might look like it took no like strength, but it's because I know the angles. Just find that angle. Then the next thing you do is you pop it off like that and you got your tire off. All right, so now we got our slick. Float life slick, can you see that? See these little Fs? So sweet. So what you're gonna wanna do is find that, line it up with your valve stem, pop it over. This part right here is a little tricky. You wanna find the angles to where the tire will just slide over the rim. Like that. Next step is you're gonna to wanna to take your valve stem, put it on in there, and uh, we go and find the air compressor. Oh. It's set at 26. I'm gonna set it to my desired pressure of like 16 pounds. That's what I like to ride at, you know? All right, so let's get this out of here. So now you've got your tire on, you might be wondering what's next. So what I like to do is find a couple objects, whatever it could be, just to support your your one wheel. So you're gonna take your board, lay it up here, and then take this tire. Make sure your cord is on the side without the cord, because you got one side with your battery, one side with your motor cable. So what you're gonna wanna do is just take it, slip it down in. There we go, she's mounted. Next step. What I always like to do is just get these out of the way, put them back on. We clip those back in. These miniature, little bit long screws, don't lose them. All right, once you get those attached, you can go ahead and flip over your one wheel. Next thing you're gonna do is take this motor cable and plug her in. Just like so. Plug it in. Make sure that this gets up and over. And turn it clockwise. So after you got that, your motor installed, you're gonna wanna put these hub bolts in. Like so. How I like to do it too is I go, I tighten one right here, not all the way. Then I switch diagonally to the opposite backside. And I tighten it down, not all the way. And switch back to here. Back to here. And basically you wanna repeat this pattern until they're all tight. This just ensures that you're not over tightening any bolts and warping it from being straight. Hub bolts are installed. So 
So next we can put on this front foot pad. So we're gonna take this foot pad. You're gonna see this connector. Just gonna take it and plug it right in. And then a little safety on it, you're gonna wanna turn it clockwise as well to get it to lock. It's gonna be a clockwise rotation. Okay, and the last step would be to install that fender lead. And also, always remember to not over tighten. I know we talk about that a lot in all of our install videos, but don't over tighten. You will strip it. All right, that's how you change a Pint and Pinex tire. I know I'm not Jeff, but hey, if I can do it, you can too. Make sure to hit that bell for notifications, like and comment below, and float on my friends.